Welcome back to GB Guns Armory, the place where we're having discussions. It's not necessarily about the gun. A lot of these, well, all of them are guns that have been previously reviewed. If you want to see the full review, check out the main channel. Everything's over there. But talking about stuff that's been out for a while, stuff that is user related versus just presenting the firearm. And then uh, since it's been out for a while, looking to get opinions, experiences, and stories from you guys, because this is not the latest and greatest, oh my gosh, I just told you it's good, now go get it. This is stuff that's been out for a while, chances are you've had it. Today's topic isn't necessarily just the gun, but the caliber. This is, and I have to read it because Rock Island's naming nomenclature is a little tough sometimes, this is an M1911 A2 FS Tact S. <laughs> but it's a double stack 5 inch 10 millimeter 1911. Fortunately, this is one of the good ones. Fits fairly tight. Our trigger is. Decent weight, decent crispness, um, as one would expect from. 1911. Now these are all steel guns, which is part of what I think somehow had them miss the double stack 1911 craze. These have been out for a long time. I've had this gun for quite some time. And when I got it, I was excited because it's the 1911 feel and ergonomics and looks. Double stack 10 millimeter. Rawr, right? 10 mil, best millimeter. Well, uh, as I've long suspected, and I say this because every time I've, almost every gun review I've done, people have said, yeah, but if they made it in 10 millimeter, um, or I'll wait and buy one when they make it in 10 millimeter. I hear that all the time, and it makes it sound like, and plus the, the 10 millimeters, the best millimeter crowd, uh, makes that sound like 10 millimeter is incredibly popular, and yet very few gun shops that I go in have a 10 millimeter in stock. If they do, it's just one kind of to fill that spot. Very few of them stock the ammo. Uh, and even online, the ammo is not necessarily everywhere. Logic would say that if as many people were buying 10 millimeters as like to talk about 10 millimeter, we'd see more guns in 10 millimeter and we'd see ammo companies focus more of their time on 10 millimeter. Hopefully it's out by the time this video is, but over at gbgunsdepot.com, I recently published some of the reports from 2023 from the National Association of Sporting Good Wholesalers, and there's some interesting reveals in there about calibers and which ones are actually popular versus what we tend to see on the media, what the internet tells us versus what was actually shipped and sold. This report comes purely from the dollar amount of things shipped in the year, but it does break it down and they do have the most popular calibers listed and you would be surprised, I think, to see which calibers, at least on ammo being made and shipped, were far more popular than other calibers, like 10 millimeter, that the internet tells you is the best out there. So. My question and the topic on this is what are your thoughts and feels on 10 millimeter? A few years back when I did the review of the CMMG Banshee in 10, mil 10 millimeter, I was excited and curious to chronograph that thing since it was the longest 10 millimeter barrel that I had seen to date. And T and I took 13 different loads to the range and chronographed them through a four and a quarter inch barrel, five inch barrel. I believe a six and then whatever the banshee was it was like eight something and I was shocked to find that of those 13 loads only one of them really gained significant velocity past the five inch uh, that tells us the 10 millimeter has never really been loaded for sub gun it doesn't have it's got quick burning powders not slow burning powders uh, also with that bigger bore which is 0.4 inch, uh, you're dropping pressure quickly because as the bullet moves down the bore, the volume that has to be filled in the bore is larger per length of barrel than it would be for, say, 9mm, which has been a sub gun round. Um, and it gets even worse for 45. So, um, with that test, I was disappointed the 10mm 
at the moment was not optimized for longer barrel or really um, that application. Cool though, since it's a handgun round, keep it in handgun, you're good, at least you know that in a handgun you're getting what you should out of it. And that's the other bit I saw, is that it wasn't necessarily a whole lot more powerful uh, than other common rounds. Definitely is more powerful, but is that increased power worth the increased recoil? Is it worth the potential increased wear and tear on a firearm? And is it worth the greatly increased cost per round to practice and use the thing? We all have different answers for that. It depends on what you want. I've heard from many folk in places like Alaska who, when they're in backcountry, they carry a 10 millimeter. That totally makes sense. Backcountry Alaska, you are, your odds of facing a threat that needs the most that you can comfortably carry makes a lot of sense to me. I think for most Americans, however, it doesn't make sense. Um, not poo-pooing on the caliper per, per se, just saying I don't think it has the same value that people think it does. And if you read that report, you'll certainly see if it's as popular as people say it is. So my question to you and our topic with these is, what are your thoughts on 10 millimeter? Is it something that you own? Is it something that you carry? Uh, if so, how often do you hit the range with it? Because to me, 10 millimeter ammo costs are not fun. I certainly don't enjoy, I don't think I would attend a training course with 10 millimeter. Maybe you don't need to because gun skills are gun skills. You could learn with nine and then go home and put on put the 10 in your belt. Then you're not trained to that particular gun, but there are plenty of companies out there like Grand Power, for example, that make nearly identical guns in same size, just for different calibers. So it's possible to train with a nine and then carry the 10 and have everything aside from recoil be about the same. But what are your thoughts on 10 millimeter? Is it the best millimeter? Is it practical? Do you have a use for it? And have you checked out that article over at gbgunsdepot.com? That's today's issue, issue edition of The Armory. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow.